and, and that's and but it's it's like wow like I do you never but that's how far out of line we've come as a country and because we've been we've it's little by little by little we've just come to think of the government as this authority in and of itself and so the creature we created has become this great dragon now that is now the become the master of the people and it's supposed to be the servant so that's one of the things in that book um here's another phenomenal book it's called the gulag archipelago uh alexander schultz um <laughs> He lived in, uh, he was in the Red Army, and uh, he wrote some critical things about Stalin in a letter. And uh, it got, it, it got, uh, they, they found it. He ended up getting put in one of the gulags, which are these work camps that they put. This is, this is huge. When communism takes off, the only way for communism and most, and, and dictator governments to work, and it's how it's always been, is it's two class. It's the ruling elite. And it's the the ruled. It is the, it is it is the poverty. It is the nobodies. What do they do with the middle class? They have to get rid of them. Yep. And so important for people to understand today because if you understand the what's what how these governments work, the end goals you have to eradicate, eradicate the middle class. Which is why what happened last few years is so important because we saw the middle class grow again because we've seen a war on it for the last many many years. So they, in, in Russia, they put a lot of the middle class in these gulag work camps. Uh, I mean, it's not far off from what happened to Hitler and the Jews. Well, they put uh, Alexander Schultzenitsyn in one of those. And, you know, he, he spent years in there. He saw, he saw just mass. I mean, just the most brutal, horrific things. And we think we know evil. We do not know evil. There is evil in this world. We've seen it in Hitler. We've seen it in, in Marxism. We've seen it in Russia and China, where they've killed 100 million people in the most brutal, evil ways. But what did he do? He, he, he was fortunate to get out, and he exposed it. And that one man, one man, brought down the entire Communist Party by speaking the truth. Mm. And that's one of the, the famous things about him is he says, one man who speaks the truth can bring down a tyranny. And you look at why that's significant today. Tyranny is always built on lies, whether it's inferior race, whether it's that these certain people, the middle class, the kulaks, what they call them in Russia, or, or the middle class now, the white people are demons and, and, and they're oppressors and, and they need to eradicate it. Or whether it's medical tyranny. Tyranny is always built upon lies. And what tyrants rely on is that people go along and play with the lie that they don't challenge it. And that's one of the things that's so dangerous about today is, you know, we live in a world where, where you're not even allowed to question yourself, your, to, your own logic. You know, you see this with a lot of the COVID stuff. It's like your own logic. You can read this and see, well, here's what it says. And my logic tells me this, but we're, but what the de what the state always wants is for you to trust the state over your own logic. Yeah. And, and that, and, and you look at what's going on in right now, and that's where really where people are is we don't question, you know, if our logic tells us different, it's, it's, it, we, you can't, and this is 1984, George Orwell, right? You don't, you, your thinking is you cannot trust your own thoughts. It is the state that is, that tells us what to think. Well, we've I'll lost, we've lost the ability to, to utilize our common sense. Critical thinking, right? It, you know, I saw another funny meme yesterday. Uh, it said, let's take a restaurant table and put it in our schools so our kids don't have to wear masks while they're sitting at the table. Like, you know, common sense, right? What, what's the I, difference between a restaurant and our school? No, no. It, 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 the common sense, and, and there's a war on common sense because, again, for tyranny to work, you, you have to, for tyranny to work, you have to eliminate God because if, if there's God in the picture, that's where your rights come from. Yeah. So you have to eliminate God and notice how we've been doing that for the past 50 plus years, because once God's gone, now the state can be the source of your rights. So you have to, and then the state, and then the state has to become the final authority. And, and once you eliminate God, Jim, here's the other significant thing. There is no more absolute truth. Mm -hmm. there, there, anything you think you know is now off the table. There is, there's no natural law. There is no, it is all, the state now becomes, the, this is what is true, including your gender, Including, I mean, that is why we're also experiencing a war on truth right now, because they have to shake people down to where people are 
are literally cannot think for themselves because everything they thought they knew is no longer irrelevant. So now where is the source of truth? It isn't God. It isn't your own common sense. It is what the state tells you and what the herd all agrees to. So what this, so this is so significant was his whole message. He says this, one man who speaks the truth can bring down a tyranny and to go along with the lie is, is to feed the lie and is to, and is to grow tyranny. So um, that's book number two. For me, the, the third book that's um, been very significant to me is uh, this classic, Jordan Peterson. Because, um, you know, if we're going to fix the world, you know, once we see that there's a problem, we're going to fix it. It starts with fixing ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, and, that's, and that's the thing that you see these people. And I hate the right and the left because it's not the right and the left. That, you know, it's not the people that are the problem. It's, it's the state and it's the media pitting us against each other. But what the state wants us to think is that you're powerless. And the answer, and that's when it comes to your school thing, your point about school. Everything in the education system is get rid of God, get rid of morality, and 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 teach people to be <laughs> useful idiots. You know, to, to to just obey and follow, obey and follow. Why is think and grow rich not in there? Because think and grow rich teaches you that you have the seeds of divinity in you, and that if you can think it, you can achieve it, and that you have unlimited power. That goes along with what our founding fathers taught. That's what brought us here. The 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 the, the Tyranny doesn't want people of unlimited power. They want people that they they want they want serfs. They want they want slaves. And so, why would you teach a slave they have unlimited power? No, no, you're an animal. There is no God. You don't know anything of your own. We are the only. We are the source of truth. You're nothing more than an animal, and we're going to teach you to just just you know whatever we tell you in school. That's the answer. If you think for yourself, you're wrong. I got my degree in secondary education and after going through, a, you know, at BYU, after going through the program, I was, by the time I was done, I was like, there's not a chance in hell. I will put my kids through the public education, education system because I, it became how dangerous the, the public education system is. And when you look at a society out there who can't think for themselves, when they see all the propaganda, a huge part of that is, is our state schools. And that's, and that is why Stalin, Hitler, Mao, every major dictator says, you give me the minds of the youth. I don't care what you think. You give me the minds of the youth and I will, and, and, and I will own the country. I will own it because they understand if you agree, if you can control the mind of the kid, the education, you got it. Well, Jordan Peterson, the reason he's significant is once we see there's a problem, it isn't okay. We have to win the battle for freedom here. You know, we have to win this war if, if because if we are enslaved in, in, in our own bad habits and and and, and our, in our own families are a mess, uh, our own lives are a mess. We're we're living lives as addicts. How are we going to be effective in the battle? Yeah, the, in the real battle. And so Jordan Peterson is, is to me essential because it's the first step if we want to win this battle. Put your house in order. Put your own house in order. Put your families in order because if because societies are nothing more than a collection of families and individuals and strong individuals who understand that they are divinity. They understand they have the ability to be as Kings and lions. They are very hard to enslave, but when you have addicts and people who have no self-worth and broken families and kids that grow up have with no understanding of who they are and no value, they will look to the state to take care of them. They will look for a master. And so either master your own life and become the master in your own home or a master will be will you know, a master will be given you, Jason. And, yeah, I'm, I got to stop you on that book right there because you got three powerful ones, and we're gonna have to wrap up. But I've got one more really important question yeah. for you um, to kind of set the pace. And, and by the way, I'd love to have you back on uh, your passion for what you're doing and your conviction, uh, what you've taught yourself. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm blown away. This is the, the, the question. And I think we all know the answer to this deep inside, but I'd like to hear you explain it. You know, you talk about this tyranny and, and this ruling class that wants to get rid of the middle class and, and make us serfs. And I don't disagree with you. I, I see it happening. I feel it. But the important question is, 
Why are they doing that to us? Why? And, and you know, and, and the reason why I ask that is because, you know, we're all victims of the media and social media, and, and we've been fed this. And, you know, you look and watch the news, and you see Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer, and, and they make me sick to my stomach. But, you know, a lot of people look at them and trust them, and they, they feel like, well, why would, why would that sweet old lady do that to us? Why would Obama do that to us? So how do we explain um, why this is happening? Ego, power, money. This is why we have the Constitution. This is why the founding fathers were so brilliant. Because, and this is why what's going on in our schools erasing history is so significant. Because this is what this is the natural path of humanity. This is the nature of man. This has been the history of the world. We are so ignorant. We live in this brief two hundred year stint of liberty that people cannot fathom how blessed we are the rest of humanity 99 percent of humanity okay we're in the one percent has lived in slavery it is the story of the bible it is the story of, of the it is the constant fight against tyranny but but because we've lived in this short 200 year period where we've been so blessed that the average of us lives better than kings and emperors of the past we just have this naive, we're so naive. We're so naive to think, oh, everybody's good. And, and all these people in power are just good people. And what, and when we are so naive to reality itself, because we have, because we've been put blinders around us and we've, and we've refused to see history, even in the last hundred years, mm -hmm. just look at the last hundred years, a hundred million people, middle-class people butchered by, by dictators, Oh, we're so afraid of this and so afraid of that and so afraid of this virus and so afraid of getting bumping our knees and when we have to be safe everywhere we go. What's the greatest threat to mankind? I tell 100 million people killed in what? A 30 year period? That's the greatest virus. And yet no one's concerned about that. So how can we, so again, it, it with we understand reality. How can you, how can we not see? And that's what the founding fathers got. That's why they're so brilliant. Everything in the constitution was to chain the government because they know it is the nature of men to get, when they get power to take more power and, and to want to rule and to want to step like the, that is as George Orwell put it to be the boot that steps and crushes the face of everyone. They rule power is real. Evil is very real. This, this is, this of good and evil, light and dark, it is, this has been the history of this world. And we've just been so beyond blessed that we're living now on the, on, on the, on the, on, on the fruits of our ancestors, what they gave us. But because like we were talking about earlier, because we're just taking advantage of everything that was given to us, it's now no longer enough to take advantage of the blessings that were handed to us by our, by our ancestors. Now we're doing something even more vile we're now not only taking the benefits and using all these resources, but we're taking from our children. We're, we're spending in debt and inflation. And we're and now are instead of passing down more fruits of liberty, we're passing down chains of slavery to our kids because we're so caught on, on being taken care of now, having now, having instant this, instant this, forget about what the cost is the future. Well, we've been given the fruits of liberty and we've and we've taken them, extorted them, and now we're passing down the chains of slavery to our kids if, if we don't stand up and fight. Mm -hmm. And the good news is I believe we will stand up and fight, and I believe we will win. Um, so I do have great confidence in the change, but that's where we're headed if we don't stop. Jason, uh, I'm completely moved. If I lived in Utah, you'd have my vote <laughs> for sure. Uh, th thank you for sharing your story. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Liberty, by the way. You can see from my hat, it says Liberty Cattle Company. It's a company I started recently. My wife owns an apparel company called Liberty or Lose, and uh, this will air on Liberty or Lose podcast. So um, we're on the same page with you. But, um, y you know, these are interesting times, and I appreciate your call to action, not only for yourself, but for people. It's important so we don't lose what we've got, right? Yeah. Um, You've got a website. You've got an Instagram page. What's the best place that people can find your platform? So the uh, website is uh, PrestonForCongress.com. Nice and easy, PrestonForCongress.com. And then uh, Instagram and Facebook is UT 
Jason Preston. So UT for Utah and just my name, Jason Preston. Awesome. But, uh, yeah. And, and 